Good afternoon. Welcome to St. John the 23rd Parish. Thank you for coming to celebrate with us today. My name is Tony. Today's theme is being persistent in prayer. I have a few announcements. Vera Bradley Bingo will be held on Sunday, October 23rd at 1 p.m. Tickets are sold in the main vestibule before and after Masses. Come join us Thursday for the second episode of Season 2 of The Chosen. There is a second collection this week for the relief of the Hurricane Ian victims. Thank you for your generosity. The opening hymn is number 507, Faith of Our Fathers. Please stand and greet your neighbor as we begin the celebration. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We welcome you around this altar as we celebrate the 28th Sunday of Ordinary Time. And if there ever was a theme of today, it's about being thankful. Just think of the name Eucharist. It means thanksgiving. It means thankfulness. And the beauty of our Lord laying down his life for all of us, coming to us as we come up to communion but asking us then to be that thanksgiving to those around us. That's why every time we gather around this altar, that's what we do. We offer that thanksgiving. Sometimes we're really good about it. Sometimes it's difficult. So my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after and make us always determined to carry out good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman went down and plunged into the Jordan seven times at the word of Elisha, the man of God. His flesh became again like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean of his leprosy. Naaman returned with his whole retinue to the man of God. On his arrival, he stood before Elisha and said, Now I know there is no God in all the earth, except in Israel. Please accept a gift from your servant. Elisha replied, As the Lord gives, as the Lord lives whom I serve, I will not take it. And despite Naaman's urging, he still refused. Naaman said, If you will not accept, please let me, your servant, have two mule loads of earth, for I will no longer offer holocaust or sacrifice to any other god except to the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. Such is my gospel for which I am suffering, even to the point of chains, like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained, therefore I bear with everything for the sake of those who are chosen, so that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Jesus Christ.
together with eternal glory. This saying is trustworthy. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we persevere, we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, he will deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem, he traveled through Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, ten lepers met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. As they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing that he had been healed, returned glorifying God in a loud voice. And he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed. Were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I propose to you that I think all of us, we, we tend to always look forward, look forward to what we have to accomplish, whether it you know, be this week or, or distantly in the future. It's the way our whole lives are ordered. So if you think about grade school, when you first started school, it's always getting to that next grade and then getting to high school. And then what, do you, what are your plans after high school? I think of jobs that you've received, it's about getting that promotion, looking forward to the next vacation, put it that way even, right? or how you're going to plan your life. I know so many people that'll say, I'd like to retire in about three or five years or 10 years from now, and this is where my kids will be in terms of school. They sort of plan it all forward. And it's, we're designed that way because we have to plan for the future in order to just make sure that we're okay. But sometimes it's good to stop for a moment and look back and be thankful for all the things rather than always plowing forward where all of a sudden we start to lose the, we lose the forest through the trees because we're so lost in the forest that we don't see the grandeur and the beauty that God has in store for us around us. I think one of the big TV personalities out there, and probably in my lifetime, is Katie Couric, who is someone who would also, on the Today Show, when she was there and, and throughout her life, she, she always was about planning and moving forward. She married a man in the late 80s. She's 65 years old today. I wouldn't, and not today's not her birthday, but that's how old she is. It's nice to know how old she is from a frame of reference. But she married her husband in the late 80s, and his name was Jay. And he was diagnosed with colon cancer at some point. 
and uh, early 90s after they had one child. And she became a really big advocate, if you remember, 30 years ago for colonoscopies. In fact, on the Today Show, she brought a camera on so we could see her colon have it take place. And they called it the Keurig effect all throughout the nation. And it was all about planning forward that if we want to be preventive on stopping this disease, and she could use, you know, the, the methodology that she had because she had the national eye through the NBC network. Um, you know, she made sure that she let everyone be planning and be preventing. That was her focus because her husband died at a young age, died in the late 90s. But she spent her life doing it. But this year, in the, as the summer solstice took place in June, she reported this only in the, it was reported on September 28th, so just about 10 days ago, that a few months ago she was going to her, her medical examination for preventive screening. And she brought her camera with her, and she um, thought, I'm going to photograph this visit so I can let my followers know and encourage people to plan forward and so forth. And then during the course of the diagnostic test, um, the doctor told her to turn off her, her phone recorder and had a heart-to-heart -heart discussion with her and said, that I want to do a biopsy on you. On, it was June 21st, the summer solstice. And boy, life changed quickly from moving forward. And she waited for the results of that. And when she got her results, she learned that although she had breast cancer at the time, it was treatable and that she could be, you know, move through this, this part of her life. And she thought about her husband who did not have an early diagnosis. That is the reason for her quest these last 30 years or so about encouraging people to plan. And she said to her, what she said to the camera when she was interviewed, was that once she realized that she could treat this and deal with this, an essence of gratitude went through her whole being, a gratitude that she never really ever experienced at that level before, because she could name countless people that she journeyed with who were given much later diagnoses, and yet she had the ability to have that time. And the doctor said we could work with it. So she was on the Today Show again as she's promoting this cause um, and promoting as we started Breast Cancer Awareness Month, of, you know, the month of October. But she came on as a survivor and she was letting the world know how important it is to look forward, but also how important it is to sometimes look back and look back at gratitude for the way that God has blessed us. Every time that we gather for Mass, we call it the Eucharist. It's about giving thanks to God. That's what our glory is all about. We give glory to God in the highest for all the blessings that he gives us and how lucky we are to be here around this altar table this particular day with the Lord who has blessed us. Our first reading involves a man named Naaman, and he's a man who was a commander, and he was considered a pagan at the time, and he had leprosy. And when you have leprosy, everyone knows you're a leper. Your skin changes, disfiguration, and so forth, and you know. And he asked Alyssa for that grace of God to be healed from that leprosy that he had. And he was given that grace, that healing grace that Katie Couric actually experienced. And so he also had an aura of gratitude. It's the first thing that he wanted to do was he wanted to give Alyssa, if you looked at our first reading carefully, he wanted to give a costly gift this costly perfume he wanted to give as a fragrance to, to thank God for that gift. And Alyssa says, you know what, I'm not going to take it. You don't have to do it. So what Naaman says then is, could I do this? Could I take two mule loads or horse loads or, you know, two animal loads, it's mule loads in the, in the scriptures, but could I take two loads of, it, of this earth from this soil, this Israelite soil, and could I bring it to Damascus, a non-Jewish area, so that I can go back home and I can thank the one true God who saved me because leprosy, nobody could cure it. That's what we hear in our first reading. When we gather on this holy altar and around this holy altar, we are on this sacred soil that reminds us of the second book of Kings that we see today in our first reading. And we thank God for that same gift, the gift of our life, the gift that he is there protecting us 
and we're called to be thankful for it, for all the ways that God has blessed us. You know, I can tell you, we may not have had leprosy. None of us may be lepers. But there are times in our life that we've had times that we feel like we're a leper. And we can, there's times that we can feel discouraged and all that. And the beauty of these readings today is that God can heal you. You need to go to him and you need to ask him for that healing. And so this, these readings invite everyone here to think about in our own life, where do we need God's healing? That sets the stage for our gospel in which Jesus is continuing on his journey to Jerusalem. If you were chosen on Thursday night, our first, our first episode took place. It was wonderful. I encourage you all to go. But it dealt with Jesus on his way to Jerusalem, and he goes to the area of Samaria, or where the Samaritans are. And as he's journeying along, if we look at our scriptures today, it says he's journeying on to Jerusalem, the place of his death. As we move along, I think we're in the 17th chapter of Luke's Gospel today. There are 24 chapters of Luke's gospel. It sort of shows we're, we're two-thirds going through that gospel at this stage. He meets these, Samar- these lepers who are both Samaritans and Jews. Um, if you are a leper, you have to call out to the people and say, I'm a leper, stay away from me. And they were put in these leper colonies and they were totally isolated. Now, Jews and non-Jews, or Jews and Samaritans, in this particular case, when we look at our gospel today, they couldn't stand each other. If if you saw the the, the film on Thursday, when we watched that, they were spitting at each other. It's just sort of the nature of, they don't want to be in each other's sight. But when you're a leper, you're all brought together. It knows no boundaries. And as these people are there, they call out to Jesus, And what they say is, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Help us be free. Help us be free of the leprosy. Almost the same prayer is named in a different way. And the beauty of God is that he's there. And what these lepers teach us are three things. Number one, when we come around this altar and we do it at home, pray with confidence. They have a confidence that even though leprosy is incurable, God can do some amazing things in our life. When we feel that we're a leper or ostracized or alone or defeated, any of those things, Jesus gives us the beauty of another day. And when these lepers are praying and they're saying it, they're doing it with great confidence that the Lord of it all, he can move mountains where no one else can. They also show us I believe, number two, to pray with humility. Not to think that you know it all, but instead to really, you know what, ask God for what your deepest longing is. But if you come before him with humility, you know that he will be there for you. I mean, even in the Beatitudes we hear, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's what these lepers are saying. They're saying with great confidence, Jesus, Master, you're the one. Help us, have pity on us. I think the third is that they offer a reverence to Christ. Sometimes in our world, we are so moving forward and we want to accomplish the world that we forget that Jesus is the one we adore. The cross there is the one that brings us salvation. He is the one that has been handed down to us, and that's why our opening song began with faith of our fathers. They're the ones that handed down our beautiful Catholic faith. And we never want to take it for granted. But when we come around this sacred altar and we pray with confidence, we pray with humility, and we pray also with a reverence, you can be sure our Lord will hear our prayers. Because in the kindness of this gospel, Jesus is moved and he cures them. Not by spoken, anything really spoken words. He says to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they walk away, they begin to realize they're before Jesus, the master. He's had pity on them, and he's helping them rejoin the community. And you can be sure, just like Naaman from our first reading, or Katie Couric from the year 2022, they would have an aura of gratitude. And one of them musters up the strength to come back, And not only comes back to say thank you, 
but really gets on his knees and he looks at Jesus and he pleads with him and he says, thank you. Thank you for making me whole. Now there's a lot of stuff that's always talked about the other nine, but sometimes when we get out of a situation that we don't like, we want to move forward and move quickly and rejoin our family. We want to rejoin time that's been lost. But I can tell you, I bet all 10 lepers were grateful. Just one had the courage to look back and thank the Lord for all of his blessings. We join around this altar day with having received many, many blessings. And one of the nicest things that we can do every night before we go to bed is to um, think of three different ways that God has blessed you. Blessed you in your family, blessed you in your friends, blessed you with clean water or a bed to, to sleep on or heat on a cold night or food in the fridge, whatever it may be, and you gotta mix it up. But the more that we are grateful, the more it will change not only our lives, but the lives around us. So I propose to you to do this. We are now around this holy altar, and we're around it just like Naaman who said, I want to take truckloads in reality of soil, and I want to build an altar in Damascus, but using the means of transportation available to him. But he wanted to make sure that the one God was thanked for having that, that, that cure. What we're called to do is come around this altar, and instead of worrying about what's going on in our lives right now, Join in our Eucharistic prayer. Instead of worrying about what's going on, some things we can't even solve, that for the next seven nights, these next few days, until next Sunday when we join together again, every day think of three things that you are blessed for or thankful for, and you will not only move yourself and grow ever more closer to Christ, but you will also move your family. Because when we have a sense of gratitude and a sense of gratefulness, it not only changes our life, but it changes every life that we meet. You can be sure these 10 lepers, when they went back to their community, everyone knew of the saving power of God. They knew how their lives were changed. And not only did it affect those 10, there's a domino effect in everyone else that they met. That's the beauty of our Mass. So now we go to the altar. We follow the road to Damascus. We're on our way to Jerusalem in our Gospel. And Jesus calls every one of us to be thankful. So think in your own life as we continue and begin this week, this new week of our Lord, all of the ways that God has blessed you and cured you from the various elements that we call our life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I invite you to rise as we now renew our baptismal promises using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. With humility and confidence and also reverence, 
Let us bring our prayers before the throne of the Lord, that the Lord may continue to bless every one of us with good health and good mission as we begin this 28th Sunday of Ordinary Time, where we continue with great thankfulness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of understanding, forgiveness, and love, that it may overcome every division among all of our peoples throughout the world, for an end to war, you know, worldwide, but also a sense of greater reconciliation and healing in every one of our families and hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may bring healing, peace, and justice to all victims of violence and all those that feel like they're lepers in our current society, that they may be brought into that communion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit may strengthen the faith of all the families of our faith community of St. John the 23rd, that as we worship around this altar, as we come on this holy ground, may we be drawn ever closer to a loving and saving God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, we pray in a special way for Christina Jones, whose funeral was celebrated earlier today. We also pray for our Mass intentions, which are for the deceased members of the Matucci, the Thomas and Libatori families, and also for Leon Novak. So for the deceased members of the Matucci, Thomas and Libatori families, as well as for Leon and those that have gone before us, may they be welcomed into everlasting life to live forever in the presence of God. And may we meet them again, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those prayers that we voice now in the silence of our hearts. And we make these prayers through the intercession of St. Joseph, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, hear our prayers and grant them, we ask, in accordance with your divine will. And we ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen. As you're being seated, there's two collections today. The first is our normal collection um, for our parish directly. The second is a secondary collection for Hurricane Ian victims. Please stand and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all, his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven. 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. By his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, 
mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession we rely, and constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, with the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family we have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Toward departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. In our own indirect way, let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us shares of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I do encourage you to go to our chosen series. We had our first episode on, on uh, Thursday night. Just had a great turnout for it. Um, but honestly, it, it's a really good season. That first episode to me was very, very moving. And I encourage you to come. You really, it's one of these shows that you can join any stage of the game because you know the journey of Jesus through Sunday Mass over the years. Um, but it's nice to see a contemporary look at these scripture passages that are living and breathing and having their being every time that we gather for Mass. And it'll give you even more to celebrate when you hear the, the word. It'll give you a visual type of uh, view too. So it's again on Thursday night at 7 o'clock. I encourage you all to come for episode number two, and we'll just journey along together through this season, too. Um, I want to encourage you also to join our Vera Bradley Bingo. That's in a, just a couple of weeks. The people that did it on the last session when we had it earlier in the year, they really, really loved it, and they wanted it again. So I hope you come. It's one of these uh, games that actually tickets will sell out, and I think we're probably at least a third sold out so far. So Please get your tickets as soon as possible for it, but you'll find that your chances on winning are pretty good, and um, I, it's a great time really had by all. So I hope you do is just join in our activities here, and your faith life will certainly grow. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.